How many of you enjoy speeches? A good number of you. How many of you use words in speeches? Today, I want to go through some ways to make your speeches move a little bit more fluently, to a little bit more clearly, to use words more effectively. I have a special remote control today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Most, many of you are researchers, you're engineers, so a large number of you, have you read an Eselvier publication? Yes? Okay. Eselvier is designed for specialists. It's designed for academics. And so if we take a look at, if we take a look at the types of publications, the titles in Eselvier, we get things like this. A complete L2, L, L2, one span characterization for small trees. How many of you understand this? Anybody? No? The next one, we have identification and confirmational analysis. Does this resonate with you? Is this understandable? And so would you go to a presenter who's going to talk like this for an hour? Many of you, most of you, no. When you're presenting, there we go. When you're presenting, it is critical that you know who your audience is. Do you agree with that? Yes. Why? What are some key points of knowing your audience? Tailor the message. Tailor message. Speak to them and not at them. Speak to them, not at them. What is their base knowledge? What is their base knowledge? And let's take a look at another set of journals. Orion Magazine. We get things like weather music. These are the article names, Planet of Microbes. Is this easier to understand? No. Maybe. The practice of brushes, recovery season. We get titles that are much more inclusive. And so number one factor in giving a presentation is to use proper words. Yes? We need to know your audience for that. Everybody's favorite topic. Yes? Tips for kissing. What does kissing mean here? Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Stupid. Stupid. Oh, okay, silly. Yes. I like to say keep it short and simple. Right? A little bit more politically correct. Keep it short and simple. When you have a message, you want to speak in the most direct way possible. Yes? You want to speak in the most clear way possible. The best way to do this, then, is to avoid the use of confusing words. As we saw from this self air magazine, these words are very technical. In this room, nobody understood them, or nobody could give me a clear answer of what these words mean. Use of jargon, use of technical language. If you don't know your audience, it's very difficult to choose the words that best suit that audience. Another one, keeping text as simple as possible, using simple words, not just jargon, but using words that are appropriate for the audience. I like these. The use of big words, right? The use of big words makes you sound smart, doesn't it? Yes? Yay, yes, <laughs> indeed. Use of big words. Amorphous is a beautiful word. It looks nice. It looks complicated. Makes you sound good, but shapeless is much easier to understand. We have 
minuscule. Why use a word like minuscule other than the fact it's a big word when you can say tiny? Terminator. Terminate. It's just ending. <laughs> Wordy phrases. This is another way to simplify your message. The reduction of wordy phrases. During the course of, during. The course of has no real meaning here. There's no addition. Has proven, has proved itself to be. I love this one. Yes, it is. Nice, simple, direct. And so when your audience is listening to you, if you're using words that are too long or too complex, they're not getting your full message. This phrase at the top is one of my favorites. When somebody says it's absolutely essential, what does essential mean? It's already at the top. How do you get more than that? Right? It's absolutely essential. Combine into one. What does combine mean? Combine into two? <laughs> no. Triangular in shape. Yes? Triangle? Yes, it's a shape. When I was in Korea, I would get many researchers would talk about the red color line. <laughs> because that comes from the Korean language. Palgan set. Set means color. And so every time they would say a color, set would be the next word, the red color line. And cliches. Back to square one. If you're writing, if you're speaking to an international audience, these types of words make no sense, right? It makes no sense as a what? Three dollar bill. Thank you. What's the purpose for language? Communicate. Communicate. Yes. Push. There we go, communication. As a presenter, you have one chance to communicate with an audience, right? If you write something, somebody can read and read and read and read. As a speaker, you get one chance to communicate. For this reason, you need to know your audience. You need to present your words clearly. You need to Keep the language as simple as possible so that your speech, your presentation can be effective. Thank you.